Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to address some of the claims I saw on a Reddit post very recently talking about Mediator and how it can degrade your application's performance. More specifically, the post was comparing using Mediator to send a request to a handler and get a response back and directly calling the service responsible for handling that request. And what's the difference between going through Mediator and directly calling it in terms of speed and memory? Now, the results were a bit worrying indeed. However, I'm going to use that as an opportunity to show you how you can realistically measure the impact in a real life scenario. Now, if you don't know what Mediator is, I do have a video on it, so I highly recommend you check that first. But this video is both an investigation on Mediator's performance, but also I'll try and teach you how you can validate those claims for yourselves, not only for Mediator, but for anything that someone says this will have a performance impact and judge whether you want to take that impact and still use the benefit of using Mediator or you want to optimize for speed and memory. So that's all we're going to talk about in this video. If you like the love content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. So first I'm going to start with the benchmark myself just to show you what that difference is. So what I have is a project here, a console application using benchmark.net, which is what we're using to run benchmarks. And then I have two things I'm benchmarking. I'm benchmarking directly calling a service which takes over here a number and it adds it into another number and it returns the result. And also I'm using mediator here. So creating a request, sending a request and getting a response back. And you can see I'm doing this through the proper add mediator DI flow, which your ASP.NET Core application will definitely use to give you more realistic numbers on the actual performance. And over here, I just have a handler. It takes that request and it adds the number and returns the response back. That's it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this is in release mode. It is. And I'm going to run this benchmark and see how the direct call to a service and how going through Mediator to do the exact same thing measures with Benchmark.net. So results are back. And as you can see, the Mediator approach takes 548 nanoseconds, which is insanely little, um, but the direct call takes 16 nanoseconds. And the memory allocated is one order of magnitude more with the Mediator approach. We're allocating 1.4 uh, bytes at this point it's 1.5 almost kilobytes while the direct call is 144 bytes so that's significant that is nothing to sneeze at if per request the difference is effectively 1.3 kilobytes in memory that's quite a bit now this micro benchmarking just tells part of the story i want to take everything we have here and put it in an api context which is probably where you're going to be using mediator anyway so what I've already done is I've copied the exact same handler where we have an example handler accepting a request and then it adds a number to another number and returns it. And I have an example service which does the exact same thing, basically the exact same code as before. And I have two controllers. One controller over here is using mediator. So taking a number from the route and sending it to mediator through a request. And the other one is a service based one where I'm just injecting a service. And I should mention that now the service is transient and also Mediator is registered with its uh, default lifetime, which is also transient. So it will give you a more realistic uh, comparison between the two. Now, even though I could run a benchmark.net test against this API, I don't want to do that. I want to launch an exoteric holistic test, stress test against the API because I also care about how the garbage collector works. Because ultimately, even though you're losing quite a few nanoseconds in performance between the two approaches, the memory allocation is more concerning because the more pressure you build, the more frequent you're going to have garbage collection, and that's going to pause your application, leading to performance degradation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run K6 tests, and this is my test. I have a few options. So 100 virtual users for a minute will absolutely spam first the service endpoint and then the mediator endpoint and they're going to ensure that the result is um, at 200 and that the 99 percentile of all the requests complete in less than 10 milliseconds. So this is basically what this uh, spec for the test means. If you're not familiar with stress testing, load testing and all that, I do have a video on it. So I highly recommend you check that after this video. You don't need to do it now. I will explain as I go. So in the terminal, I'm already in the mediator API uh, folder, so I can .NET run the API in release mode. And as you can see, hosting environment production, this is all uh, compiled in the optimized way. And then I'm going to go on this Linux tab over here, and I'm going to run the k6 run stress test.js with this flag here to ignore 
the SSL certificate check. Um, and actually, just so I don't completely pin my CPU to 100%, I'm going to change that to 10 virtual users. Um, and this should still be enough to give us a clear idea on how the two performances deviate from each other. So with all of that, I'm going to go ahead and launch this test over here and wait for a minute and see how many requests per second we got if all of them succeeded and all that. So results are back. And as you can see, this is achieving almost 38 thousand requests per second not too bad and everything was within the uh, margin that we set so no problem with the duration no problem with the uh, http status of each request now we're going to go ahead and change this to call the mediator endpoint which is this one over here using mediator so let me just make sure i saved that go ahead and relaunch the test and in a minute i will know how the two compare from a more clear point of view so results have completed and even though there is a small degradation of maybe 500 requests per second between the two this still did 37.3 thousand as opposed to 37.9 and understand that this is all within margin of error so there is something yeah but nothing massive. I mean, are you doing 37,000 requests per second? Probably not. However, I want to take it a step further because in this scenario, if I show you uh, my course, for example, over here, um, they didn't peak. They were around 75% uh, in all 16 cores and 32 threads. Uh, and I have plenty of memory to spare. So it could use as much as it needed within the constraints of .NET itself. However, what I want to do is I want to rerun these two tests, but instead of running them without really seeing what's happening within the application, I'm going to profile them with an application called .memory, which is a JetBrains tool, which will allow me to see how much memory is allocated, how frequently we're garbage collecting, what objects are being allocated, and see what's going on internally. So I'm going to go here in the application that is running. I'm going to shut it down, make sure it's clear, and I'm going to um, run it again in .NET Run, and I'm going to use .NET Memory to hook into this running application. Now, I should note that .memory doesn't have a font scaling mechanism and uh, not a dark theme. So I'm going to try to zoom into things so you can see it, uh, but you will be blind in 3, 2, 1 now. So as you can see down here, I can see instances I can uh, hook into, and I'm going to use this one, which is the one um, I'm running over here. And I'm going to use the sampled allocation data approach, which won't affect the application's performance too much. And basically, that's it in terms of configuration. I'm going to just double click on that. Um, and now we are uh, hooked in. And as you can see, we have 140 total megabytes. But if I remove the unmanaged memory, uh, this is what our memory looks like. Very clean. Nothing is going on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the benchmark and I'm going to launch a benchmark, but I'm going to make sure I launch the uh, service one, not the mediator one. And with all that configured, I'm going to press run. And as you can see, the hip gen zero just skyrocketed and you can see that it goes up and down and up and down and up and down. This is uh, the heap becoming bigger and then garbage collection kicking in over here. So every time, let me just zoom in. Every time you see one of these little fellas, this, 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 basically every time you have a cliff drop, this is garbage collection. And when this happens, your application is basically pausing to collect the memory, all the dangling bits, and then it just goes up again. And it's using all the way up to 550 uh, megabytes, it seems. And if I also include months memory, around uh, 800 megabytes overall. But really that's the bit we care about, the climbing and, and going down. And once this is done, I'm going to get a snapshot of it the moment it completes. So it completed. I'm getting a snapshot of all the objects in memory. And then I'm going to go back in Rider and change this to Mediator. Uh, getting a snapshot does trigger a garbage collection too. So we're good to go with another run, but against the Mediator as well. So I'm going to click Run here. And if I go back to that memory, this now is using Mediator. And it's not as noticeable, but if you compare how often GC happens here between the two GC events and here, you can see that GC is happening more often. So in a longer period of time, these extra objects that Mediator allocates for its own needs will impact performance because you're going to have more garbage collection. Now, if you have this much memory, basically half a gigabyte of heap memory, do you care? 
you don't really care. But once this finishes, I want to show you what happens when this is taken into a memory constrained environment. And if you're running your microservices in Kubernetes, for example, within a container, your pod will be constrained in memory, maybe 128 megabytes, maybe 256 megabytes. Anything over that is a bit excessive, but it depends on the microservice as well. So let me just detach this over here and maybe just kill the process too. Here we go. Uh, so this is not running anymore. And if I show you the two snapshots, as you can see here, the first one, and let me just zoom all the way up here. In total, it allocated 11.4 uh, gigabytes of memory, and we had a total of uh, 1.3 seconds of GC time. So not too bad. 1.44% of all the execution time was GC time, basically dead time. But if I select the second benchmark, the one with Mediator, then you can see that we have 14.15 gigabytes of memory allocated, in total that is, including the garbage collection, and that GC time was a bit increased and we have 2.1% of a total GC time. So there is an increase. Now, like I said, we gave it all the memory it could use and those are the results. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Rider and show you the launch profiles. I have a second launch profile over here, which includes a hard limit on the GC heap, and this is in hex. So this will add the GC uh, heap hard limit of 128 megabytes to simulate how your app would behave in a memory constrained environment, most likely a Kubernetes pod or whichever containerization technology you are using. And this is very common. Most services, especially microservices that care about that performance uh, will operate. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to launch this application, but I'm going to select the launch profile with the memory uh, restriction. So this is now running, constrained the memory to 128 megabytes, and I'm going to go back to .NET memory. I'm going to go over here again and double click on that. And now we are attached. I'm going to remove the unmanaged memory and I'm going to run the service benchmark again. So this is configured. I'm going to go back here in K6 and I'm going to relaunch this test and let's go back to dot memory and as you can see now that we have constrained the memory uh, and if i show you unmanaged you'll see that it's picking at 70 megabytes now um, overall you see how the heap is going pop, 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 it's going high low high low high low that's because you have so many if you can see here so many gc events effectively constantly due to the stress test so let's wait for this to complete and then let's run the same thing with mediator and compare the two so let's grab a snapshot of that now that it's finished go back here change this to mediator and then relaunch the benchmark and we're going to talk about the results of the benchmark in a second i wouldn't really take them at face value because this is running attached to dot memory so there will be some performance impact so let's not look at them for now. Let's wait for this to finish and then talk about the two results now that the memory is constrained on each application. So that's now finished. I'm getting a snapshot and I'm killing the process. So let's zoom out and compare the two. So first snapshot, we in total, we allocated again, 11 gigabytes of memory, it's sort of the same thing over here. But out of one minute and 18 seconds, we had a 4.5 seconds GC time. This is now 5.7%. It increased because the heap size was less and more garbage collection had to happen. And this is the non-mediator version. If we now check the mediator version over here, you can see that allocated a whopping two more gigabytes of memory and it increased from 5.5, I think, to 8.5% of the time of this execution was garbage collection time, a total of 5.7 seconds doing nothing. So as the available memory decreases, these results are becoming more evident. You can see them properly. Now, does this apply to you? Well, that's ultimately up to you to decide. Are you giving more memory to, to each pod? Then maybe it doesn't have that much of an impact. Uh, so that's how you really identify these problems. If I go back to the results, you can see that the latest run with the constrained memory is 32,000 requests per second, uh, while the other one, the previous one is 34. So now we have a 2,000 requests per second difference. So yes, there is a performance impact, but that performance impact is relative to the available memory and the metal you are running. So basically what I'm trying to say is, yes, there is performance degradation if you use Mediator. However, are you running on those numbers? Does this apply to you? Have you done your research and have you concluded that, yes, this is a performance impact that you cannot 
take. Realistically, it probably isn't. If you're running in a competing consumer scenario or if you're running REST APIs, effectively stateless APIs, the benefit of having Mediator and having cleaner code in your code base far outweighs the effort you probably have to go to create an extra pod in Kubernetes to deal with the extra traffic that you maybe couldn't handle because of the mediator impact. So measure first, make statements second. Yes, there is always a performance impact on basically everything, but is it an impact you can soak because the code you end up with far outweighs the benefit of fixing it and ending up with more complicated code. If you want to keep one thing out of this video is always measure. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe, more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.